he has a presentation to give us regarding. Um, well, I'll let him give it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, board members, members of the public, good evening. I'm Mike Toller, and I'm for McHenry County's Regional Community, Ad Community Advocate for the McHenry Township area. Internet Freedom for McHenry County is a volunteer community interest group Dave Katowski created almost a year ago. I don't get paid for this, and neither do any of the rest of our volunteers. We saw a need in our community, so this organization is trying to address that need. We lack critical infrastructure for today's needs and tomorrow's. McHenry, McHenry County is already lagging behind the digital age. We pay too much for internet access, and we don't get much for it. Our schools, governments, residents, and businesses pay way too much for what we get. We may, many of our residents don't even have broadband internet services. So what do we do about it? I believe that what is currently happening in other communities and what has happened 100 years ago can help find us a real solution, a solution that works. Let's go back 100 years. When some places in the U.S. had electricity, mostly the cities, and they used it to power mostly street lamps and trolleys. Certainly, out here, it was mostly horse and buggy. Imagine that such things like refrigerators, fans, toasters, and all the appliances didn't exist. If they did, they were restricted to the affluent folk. At first, it was just the lights for the wealthy folk, you know, getting rid of candles and gas lamps. And the introduction of lights into wealthier homes proved to be a wedge, a segue, for appliance makers to start electrifying all kinds of things, fans, toasters, irons, vacuum cleaners, you name it. Electricity is use soared because of this. It created a need for additional capacity and the business case for building it. However, it never reached rural communities because it wasn't considered profitable. Now, building on that foundation, let's talk about our current situation. Here and now with internet. Unlike just a few years ago, uh, children and adults are now required to submit their homework online and many assignments require an internet connection. I know this because in my day job as an IT engineer, we work with a number of schools and every single one of them have the goal of becoming one to one meaning every child has a computer. Our schools are handing out portable computers for children to complete the assignments. But it's only possible when they have internet access. Some of these kids are forced to go to McDonald's or other public places like Starbucks to do their homework because it's the only place they can go. School isn't open all the time. Libraries aren't open at 24 hours. And even some of these facilities don't have great internet connections themselves. Did you know that some 50% of children were not able to complete homework assignments because they didn't have internet access or a computer in their house? This thing that I'm referring to is commonly known as the homework gap. Those who have resources to do their homework and those do, that do not. This is part of the greater picture of the digital divide for all of us. This lack of cheap, high-speed, reliable internet service and fiber optic internet gives our kids a real handicap that's felt through all of our lives. Not having the proper infrastructure, which fiber optics is, stops people from moving here. It makes it harder for people to sell their homes, stops companies from investing, and stops many things from happening. And it only adds to the accumulating opportunity costs and ineffectiveness for our community. With the creation and expansion of a community fiber optic network, McHenry County, including McHenry Township, will address many goals, including economic development, communication, and education. So what kind of internet service options do we have here in McHenry Township? Comcast, AT&T, and Frontier. Comcast offers high speeds in this area, in the gigabit range. Uh, that's 1,000 megabits. However, due to the type of technology that Comcast employs, and their preferences for oversubscribing their pipelines, they re you will rarely see those speeds. They charge too much for all of these services, and it comes with deals, additional fees, data caps, and their cost of service never goes down, despite advances in technology making the infrastructure less expensive. AT&T, through most of this township, provides only DSL. This technology is at best obsolescent, and at worst, archaic. DSL speeds range from 14 megabits on the low end to 20 megabits on the high end, with most areas that are rarely ever seeing that high end. AT&T does have some fiber 
capable uh, to get the bit in this county, but it's mostly in the new construction areas, and there, there are no known plans to expand this to the existing homes. Then there's Frontier. Frontier as well offers DSL, as which I've stated already, and is long out of date, and doesn't even offer the threshold of 25 megabits or more to be considered uh, broadband by the FCC. Frontier is not going to be upgrading their network from DSL to fiber optics because they're heading for some serious financial troubles. They're losing customers hand over fist, and it's only going to get worse for them. At this point, we can probably expect to see Frontier head into bankruptcy and get bought out, and that usually means less choice for us, the consumers. We are aware that villages in this, in this county try to encourage more competition and investment by reaching out to such companies as Time Warner, which is now owned by Charter, Frontier, Frontier, Comcast, and more. From what we heard, none of them were interested in investing. But the private sector, when the private sector isn't willing to invest and is not willing to expand, even when it's profitable to do so, and you've begged them to do it, what exactly do we have left to do? What else can we do? Because the federal level and the state level, we've given these companies billions and billions of debt, uh, deregulation, tax incentives, tax breaks, or promised great future with fiber optics everywhere, but they've not delivered. And every day they fight us on delivering and asking for more. There are hundreds of communities that have faced and are facing this exact situation across the county. Our country, sorry. Large and small, rural, non-rural, Republicans, Democrats alike, are seeing the failure of the private sector to provide us cheap, high-speed, reliable, and universal access of the internet to everyone. The only way these communities have been able to solve this problem was to build their own fiber optic network. If you're going to spend taxpayer money, you might as well own the bus. Such communities include Rock Falls, Illinois, Highland, Illinois, Champaign-Urbana, Longmont, Colorado, Fort, Fort Collins, Colorado, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Wilmington, North Carolina, and even Linden Township in Michigan. There are hundreds more like this. Our problems are similar to almost everyone, everywhere. For example, in City of Rock Falls, uh, city outside, just outside Dixon, along Interstate 88, they decided to build out a community fiber network just last year. Rock Falls is a city of a population of about 9,500, and it occupies uh, about 3.88 square miles. Consists of four. Uh, 4,100 homes and this fiber optic network is being built at no cost to the taxpayers by utilizing revenue bonds, which is being paid for with the revenues from the network. They're served by Comcast, but much like here, Comcast was offering subpar expensive service. They decided to take the destiny into their own hands and improve things by rolling out a fiber optic network to all their businesses and to do an organic growth method with the residents, called fiberlets, and only build out when demand was sufficient. Rock Falls is doing this as a way to reduce risk to the taxpayers. But the downside is they only build out when the demand is enough, and in the end, residents, uh, when demand is enough, but in the end, it gives residents more options and better connectivity for their businesses and more. Another community that decided to invest in community fiber optic networks is Linden Township in Michigan. Linden Township is located north of Interstate 94, Michigan Route 52, goes right through it, and it's located 30 minutes northwest of Ann Arbor. It's smack in the middle of the Waterloo State Recreation Area. Linden Township is your typical size township, about 35 uh, square miles, population is about 2,700 citizens, and consists of 960 households. Linden Township's issue was simply a lack of service for all their citizens. While there are pockets of charter, much like the township here, it's not universal and it's slow. They decided to solve their problem of building their own network by issuing a referendum, which passed and is being paid slowly with the general obligation bonds over 20 years, which averages out to about $21.95 per month per household. So nearly $200 to $300 every year per household. Linden Township is charging $44.95 a month for 100 megabits, whereas Comcast charges $110 for similar speeds here. For gigabit service, they're charging about $70 a month compared to Comcast charging a $140 here. 
This means for gigabit service of Linden Township, folks are saving nearly $70 a month or more over what we pay Comcast for the service, even after the tax increase. Roughly $840 a year. Multiply that over many times and you've got some serious money coming back into your economy. Need more examples? Farrow in Ohio, a suburb, a suburb of Akron. Population 7,400, <coughs> occupies nearly 4.5 square miles, has roughly 3,200 households. They did a similar model to Rock Falls by rolling out fiber to everyone at no cost to the taxpayers by utilizing the same method of revenue bonds and an organic growth model. They started in 2015 and it took a number of years, but they were successful. And now they're offering internet to their neighbor, Akron. Fairlawn offers 300 uh, megabits for $55 a month. Their gigabit service is only $75 a month. Their savings over Comcast and Frontier are shocking. So these communities decided to invest in fiber optics and get more choices. Great! What is fiber optics? What does it mean to me and why is it important? Remember in the beginning when I discussed how rural communities 100 years ago were left behind when it came to electricity because it wasn't profitable? Then and now, this is called the <coughs> growth. It was slow. The rural folks were never going to see electricity unless something was done. Finally, people complained loudly enough and the government intervened. Electric companies fought against it, but eventually it led to what's called the Rural Electrification Act of 1936. And that was the start of the electric grid we see today. By the 50s, half of the rural folks had electricity. It would have been until the 60s when most were covered. So finally it came, everything we see today. We cannot have the society today if it wasn't for mass electrification. Today electricity is plentiful, cheap, and universally everywhere in the US. It's also regulated. Without all that, our society would not be possible. As electricity was for the industrial age, fiber optics is for the information age, which is today. We don't sit around flipping circuit breakers trying to run for our entire house on 20 amps only. No. Most houses have over 200 amps. We don't use all 200 amps, but it's there when we need it. <clears throat> and, we'll be as, uh, and it will be as, de as devices require more electricity in the future. Comcast and Frontier and the rest argue that people don't need the speed or bandwidth of fiber, but we can settle for nothing less. <clears throat> fiber optics is giving you Fast and, uh, fiber optics is giving you fast enough service that you aren't waiting for something to happen. Fiber optics runs on glass the size of human <coughs> hair, and its capacity is nearly unlimited. Because it's, it's nearly unlimited, because it's not based on the number of electrons you can push down a copper wire, it's based on the number of lasers and different colored lasers you can use to push through this glass strand, making its capacity nearly <coughs> unlimited. And since fiber optics is made of glass and plastics, the medium itself is bound to last multiple generations. This is what we need now in McHenry Township. This is the future of McHenry. This is the future that McHenry County cannot survive without. In conclusion, what we're asking you, the board, the town, now that you're here to do, we're asking you to investigate interest in the community, to check out this opportunity of building a community fiber network to bring countless benefits to our community like hundreds of others before you, and to investigate the cost, possible financing options, and to find out if there really is a business case to be made here, to assess the need. We suspect that there's, uh, there is a strong need for this. But to find out, we need a complete, complete broadband surveys by, taking, by talking to businesses, community, our children, parents, schools, our libraries, our seniors, our workers, and we need to talk to our neighbors like Richmond Township, Hebron Township, and even the leadership of McHenry County. We may, may not even realize that we're missing this critical piece of infrastructure because we don't have the data. To make any dis big decisions like this, we need data. Getting this data, forming a committee, doing a broadband survey, that's where we start. We start right here. As for the people, we're asking you to get involved. We're asking you to talk to the board, to tell them your story. Tell them your plights, your issues with the digital divide. The issue your kids have of not able to do homework, the issue of expensive broadband and more. If you don't talk to them about this, they don't know. We don't know what we don't know. The thing is, is one of these rare occasions that can be resolved at local level. This is the kind of thing that's really empowering. 
In the end, let's find a way to get all of us cheaper, faster internet. Thank you for your time. Is there any questions? Is there empowering legislation, that, or do they need empowering legislation to do this? The question was, uh, is there empowering legislation or do we need it? Uh, I don't believe there is any empowering legislation at the state level, but I don't believe that we really need it any because we have had multiple townships and cities already in this state do this. Yes? I don't have a question on this statement. Uh, we moved here about three years ago from the city of Chicago. Uh, the rates went up and the speed went down. And I, uh, fiber is not available. It's not available in most places. In fact, I only know <coughs> one area within the McHenry Township. Actually, it's just outside of McHenry Township. Uh, and that's on Bull Valley Road in those new developments by Kunat, those townhomes. There's fiber there. It's, it's right here at our door, and they won't bring it to us. Actually, I have fiber. Uh, I'm on the east side of the Stakey Bay. I don't know if they went any further than that. We're you know, very close to Lake County. But I have fiber at my door, but I don't know anyone else who does. And, Mm -hmm. Yeah, the city of McHenry, they started playing fiber optic uh, wire probably 17, 18 years ago, if it's not warm. And it's all probably still there and it's all probably still usable. It's just dark fiber. And dark fiber, if we can get that connection going across the entire county, then the entire county benefits and pays into the system. Any questions from the board? Okay. Oh, I think it was an interesting presentation. Thank you, Mr. Bowman. Thank you for the time.